hello now in type 2 only in this one side it is fixed and other side it is free in the type 2 only in previous case what we did as both the ends are free in that case we can start either from the left hand side or from the right hand side but here as one end is fixed so we cannot start the free body diagram from this left hand side so we have to start from the right hand side now first body we are taking on this right hand side the 40 kilo newton force it is acting so we will write the first 45 kilo newton as per the static law equal and opposite force we have to apply on the left hand side so here again the 45 kilo newton so this is the free body diagram of the first body now we have to start with the second body what should be the force on the second body at right hand side when we join the second and the third body we need the resultant force of 10 kilo newton towards the left but on the third body already the 45 kilo newton force it is acting towards the left so what should be force on the right hand side of the second body so 45 towards right we need 10 towards the left means what we have to apply towards right hand side the 35 kilonewton so if I apply the 35 kilonewton towards the right and 45 towards the left so resultant you will get a 10 kilonewton towards the left so here you will get the resultant force 10 kilonewton when we join this body second and the body third so this is the 35 kilonewton force towards right on the second body again for the static reason we have to apply the equivalent opposite force of the 35 kN. Now this is the free body diagram of the second body. Now we will go for the third body. Again similarly 35 kN it is already acting towards the left but when we join the first and the second body at that time the resultant force the 15 kN it should act towards right means this force should be larger than the, this one so if we see we need the 15 kN towards right so what we have to do the 50 kN so 50 towards right minus 35 towards left we will get the resultant 15 towards the right so this force should be greater than that of the this how much so that is of the 50 now if you check once again so 50 towards right minus 35 towards left you will get the resultant 15 towards the right now once you calculate the one of the force on this body first so again for the static equal and opposite the force we have to apply that is of the 50 kN so this is the free body diagram of the type 2 only but here one end it is fixed now once you get the forces acting on each body you can easily calculate the what is the stress induced on the first body by using the equation stress is equal to load upon the area again separately you can calculate the stress induced in the second body and stress induced in the third body even you can calculate change in length of the first body due to this applied force change in length of the second body due to applied force and change in length of this third body due to this applied force or if you want to calculate the total change in length of the if I consider this as a AD that is AB, BC and the CD so change in length of the AB plus change in length of the BC plus change in length of the CD then we can calculate the overall change in length of the this whole body here we are adding all this because the forces acting on the first body second body and the third body are tensile suppose if one of the force suppose if this force is the compressive then how to calculate the total change in length of this body so if the force is tensile we can add and if the force is compressive then we can subtract 
so if the force acting on this CD is the compressive then here we have to subtract that is change in length of AB plus change in length of the BC minus change in length of the CD if force is compressive now we will move to the third type that even we can call it as a statically indeterminate problems when we can call it as a indeterminate the problems in which the simple equations of the statics are not sufficient to solve this problem then we can call it as a statically indeterminate problems then if you want to solve this what we have to do we have to use its deformation characteristics along with the equilibrium equation <coughs> now what we have to do we have to draw the free body diagram separately means this is of the first body and this is for the second body so first we have to do we have to assume the forces acting on the each body as a tensile so tensile force acting on the first body that I can assume as a P1 tensile force acting on the second body as a P2 now when I join the body first and the second at this point we should get the resultant force of 150 kilonewton towards the right so what should so the P1 force should be greater because it is acting towards right P2 towards left as resultant towards right so P1 should be greater than that of the P2 so from this I can formulate one equation what it is P1 minus P2 it should be equal to 150 kilonewton so this we will formulate that is P1 minus P2 then what about the total deformation of this body here as both the ends are fixed so the change in length total change in length it is zero that its deformation characteristics so even change in length of the AB plus change in length of the BC if I take but the total change in length it should be zero so this is the equation 2 and by using these two equation we can calculate what is the force P1 and what is the force P2 instead of this delta L is equal to PL upon A and again PL upon A as they are giving the length of the specimen area and the angst modulus so again here from this th equation number 3 you will get the relation between P1 and P2 and from equation 1 the relation between P1 and P2 so the two unknown P1 and P2 and the two equation from this we can calculate the forces acting on the body 1 and body 2 suppose if we get the value P1 as a positive means we can say the force acting on this body which initially we consider the tensile that is the correct and if we get the P2 again positive means whatever that force acting on the body 2 tensile which we consider that is again correct and if we get the value negative means suppose if the value P2 we get the negative then what we have to do initially we assumed it as a tensile but as value we are getting the negative means the assumed direction is wrong means the force acting on this body is the compressive so in this way we can find out the forces acting on the body first and body two once you get the force then easily we can calculate the stress induced in the first body stress induced in the second body here sometimes they ask what is the change in length of the first body means we have to calculate the separate that is delta L of the AB and or you can calculate delta L of the BC also but the thing is what the total change in length that is zero 